How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Labor Day weekend. Everybody in the U.S. that's celebrating, barbecuing, not working tomorrow. I'll take that. Happy All Out Sunday. All Out is tonight at 8 p.m. Payback was last night. And once again, the CM Punk vortex continues. Tony Khan started a collision with a, a video of him essentially addressing the CM Punk situation and telling everybody that he feels that disappointment. He's disappointed himself and that CM Punk has been terminated for, with reason. We're going to break this down. There's a lot to talk about here. A lot of people didn't know what Tony was going to do here. Was he going to sweep this under the rug? Were they going to do 30-day suspensions? But there is more to this. CM Punk was terminated with cause. That's how we began it. And then it, it kind of set the tone for collision, a, a post-CM Punk collision, where uh, I have some, some news on that, on what WBD knows or has been told. Uh, very interesting stuff here. And there's also that little question mark now looming. Will WWE bite? Would they want to bring this guy back? I mean, listen, he's a huge name. It would have been a big pay-per-view tonight. He would have had a great reaction in Chicago. Not happening. We're going to talk about CM Punk. Payback, collision, and all out. All today, jam-packed show. Here on Sports Byline, we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's go right into it. AEW terminates CM Punk with cause. This was a statement. This was put out yesterday, late afternoon. All Elite Wrestling has terminated the wrestler and employment agreements. So more than one, one wrestling, you know, it's more than one contract, whatever he had. I don't know if this was like a merch deal or who, whatever it was. Wrestler and employment agreements between Phil Brooks, CM Punk, and AEW with cause effective immediately. The termination was confirmed today by Tony Khan, CEO, general manager, and head of creative for AEW. The termination follows a week-long internal investigation of the incident occurred, that occurred backstage at All In London. On Sunday, August 27, following the investigation, AW Discipline Committee met and later dis uh, convened with outside legal counsel before making a unanimous recommendation to Khan that CM Punk should be terminated with cause. Khan's official statement was the following. Phil played an important role within AEW, and I thank him for his contributions. The termination of his AEW contracts with cause was ultimately my decision and mine alone. Of course, I wish I didn't have to share this news, which may come as a disappointment to many fans. Nevertheless, I am making the decision in the best interest of the many amazing people that make AEW possible each and every week. Our talent, our staff, venue operators, and others whose efforts are unsung but essentially essential to bringing our great show to television at the arena, stadiums, and throughout the world. Tony also addressed a live crowd in Chicago at right before collision. And that video was all over the internet. Uh, so there were two videos. One was the official video package that, you know, they had pre-recorded. The other one was he addressed the live crowd and he was booed heavily by that Chicago crowd. I mean, of course he's going to get booed right it's in Chicago. Tony addressed the live crowd before collision. Then the video statement on uh, that that began collision. Several people people were investigated ahead of the decision. Khan said that he had never felt like his life was dan in danger before this incident. Which you know this is very much a a legal statement. The attorneys I'm sure consulted on this, and uh, supposedly there was a meeting scheduled that never took place. Also, so. Listen, it's done. It's over, you know? And now we got to think about life after punk in this company. They can, they got to, first of all, they got to stop with the innuendos and the references, right? Now now it's over. I'm sure they'll do it tonight. But after tonight, they got to, they just got to let it go. This was a failed experiment for a multitude of reasons. 
you know, the reality is CM Punk does not want to politic. He doesn't want to play nice when things are said to him that he doesn't want to hear. Other people feel the same way. And it created a terrible scenario in that company. And, you know, at the end of the day, the only people really, I mean, it's billionaires and millionaires fighting with each other, right? Over the fact that they cannot figure out a way to to, to work. And listen, I'm not putting the blame on Tony. I, I, I'm not putting the blame on any one individual. But, you know, I come from a, a, a corporate school that the blame is always put on management, not the staff. The staff learns from you. Your staff is only as good as the leadership. And if there is an issue with the leadership, situations like this will happen. It's not only on Tony. This company has expand, expanded very quickly. And they have attempted to, to put in things, you know, that will alleviate this. But, you know, you have personalities that have known issues. Would this happen in WWE? Would a situation like this happen in WWE? You know, situations like this happen not regularly, not weekly, but they do happen in that company. But at the end of the day, they have the structure built out where it doesn't turn into, uh, you know, a, a potential violent attack. You know, something that was said to me by somebody at, the, at WWE years ago, and it makes sense. There are certain individuals that do not make it to WWE, or they come here and they fail in WWE, and they could go off and do something else. But there's always a reason. When CM Punk left that company, everybody was cheering. Good on Punk. The blame was not on him for what happened in WWE. Even with the, the last scenario, last year, this time, the blame, you know, was 50-50. There were people on the punk camp. There were people on the elite camp. But it was more, honestly, the people that were picking sides uh, on, you know, the fan side was just picking your favorite player more than anything else. But within the company, I mean, obviously, punk has his friends and he has people on his side and they're able to work with him and they're able to communicate with him. And there's a tremendous amount of people on the other side that have had issues with them. And it seems like the issues are more, they outweigh the other side. Listen, it's just terrible. I, I, you know, when stuff like this happens, you always think about it. And, and for what I do outside of wrestling, I always think about what could I have done that could have prevented this? And what can I learn from this? I hope that's, that's, what we're, that's where we are with this. I hope AEW has figured out how to prevent this from happening in the future. Well, man. <laughs> I guess, I guess the answer is you don't hire CM Punk again, right? I mean, there was a, this, this is just silly. Uh, nobody wanted this outcome. I could tell you that. Uh, I've spoken to people within the Warner organization last week when, you know, everything was happening. And everybody wants to make stuff like this work. But if there is camera footage of you... And by the way, I, I, I do not because I, I host a Wrestling Observer radio show, uh, not because I, I work with Wrestling Observer, but because of what Talon told me and what people within AEW told me that are very neutral to this. They don't have an, a negative opinion of Punk or Tony or anything. I was told that Dave's account was very much uh, uh, the closest to what happened in those words. This is coming from talent. This is coming from people that work there. The talent names, you would probably know the people. are. It's not, it's not the usual cast of people that the internet talks about. So, you know, you can't lunge at your boss. You know, what would have happened if he did that to Vince? Maybe nothing. Maybe Vince would have patted him on the back. I don't know. Uh, I, this is just so unfortunate. So, I... You know, I, I think we are we are past it now. I think we have to move on from the CM Punk bubble, the vortex in AEW. I mean, and here's the unfortunate part, right? These guys did an 80,000-plus stadium show. 90,000 people in the building. The only thing anybody was talking about, it wasn't the max outcome. It wasn't a tag match outcome. It was about CM Punk. 
once again, right? We got a pay-per-view weekend that he's not on. What are we talking about? CM Punk. It has become a, a, a vortex that's taken away from wrestling. And I'm not, again, this is no blame on the, on the, on the, the, the people that were involved. This is just, you know, just, just thinking out loud as someone that covers this. Like, I'm tired of it. I want to talk about the fun stuff. This is not fun anymore. How many times does something like this have to happen? And you say like, oh man, again, something happened. I hope this is a learning lesson for everybody. And I hope Tony putting his foot down and terminating him kind of checks people in line because he's not the only one that has problems with people. And this goes for WWE too. I mean, there are, there are people that are cranky and angry and fights happen all the time. And we've heard about previous fights with people. Sammy got into a fight. Andrade got into a thing. Uh, Eddie got into a thing with Sammy. You know, like, I, I hope this is almost a, a sobering moment for a lot of people saying like, maybe, maybe we don't react this way. Think of the harm that it does to everybody else involved. You know, Samoa Joe had a hell of a match. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's applauding Samoa Joe, the match with CM Punk. Nobody's talking about any of it. It's all tainted. They took a really great moment, and they turned it into something that you cannot work off the momentum because the momentum was, was buried. And tonight, we have a pay-per-view. And last night, we had a pay-per-view. We're going to talk about All Out, and we're going to talk about the changes done to it. But I also, we're going to talk about Payback from last night. Interesting pay-per-view. I didn't dislike it. I actually had a lot of fun watching that and Collision. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more when we come back. Also, hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. Send me your questions. We'll be right back right after this on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Sunday edition of the show. Let's talk about Payback from last night on Peacock. WWE had a pay-per-view. I, I, you know, it's so much. <laughs> it's so much wrestling. Uh, you also had Collision last night, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, before we go into All Out. But Payback started last night with Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. This was a very good opener. This was the best I had seen Trish in a long time. Uh, she did great. Becky did great. Uh, the story was, uh, oh, Tiffany Stratton was shown in the crowd too, right? And then they did something after that. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, it was a very good opener. Trish tried to escape the cage right away. The finish saw Zoe Stark come out to help, but Becky was able to avoid her uh, and hit a top ro rope man handle slam to get the win. Afterwards, Trish is laid out. Zoe's trying to help her get out of the ring. And Trish, you know, has a little bit of an attitude and she ends up pushing Zoe and Zoe ends up hitting her finisher on Trish and leaving the ring. I thought that was a fun match. I thought that was a very fun match. Um, I, 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 I want to see where they go. Obviously, Zoe and Trish are going to have something possibly here, but they're really, they're really pushing Zoe. They, they really want to create her as a top star there. John Cena came out to, as the host of Payback. He was interrupted by The Miz. Cena's going to be around for a little bit. It's going to be interesting where they go here. Are they going to go with a Cena and Miz program again? One of my, my least liked program for each of those guys. Cena made himself the special guest referee for The Miz versus LA Knight. LA Knight comes out. Standard Miz match. Right? What do you think, MG? Safe, standard, not a bad match, Plotting. not a great match, Plotting. just just there. <laughs> what a, I mean, it really was like a standard WWE style, decent pro wrestling match. So afterwards, LA Knight defeated The Miz in 15 minutes and 46 seconds. Afterwards, uh, Cena and, and Knight did a thing on the ramp where they were kind of like, teasing something and Cena takes his shirt off like he's going to go with it go at him uh and then they ended up you know celebrating and shaking hands so they left the seed there for that program the LA Knight reaction was huge huge pop huge reaction uh, they're starting to see it I mean I know that the Miz is kind of like the test before you get pushed to that next level I I hope for LA Knight this this worked and they 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 see what a lot of other people see last January I was at the Garden 
I saw that reaction. Last December, I'm sorry. I was in the garden in December. I was in the garden in, uh, when was that? In March? Or late February? And I was at the garden again in July. And I have to tell you, every time I go there, that reaction is bigger and bigger and bigger. Rey Mysterio defeated Austin Theory. Not a great match. Mysterio reversed an A-Town uh, for a roll-up pin. I didn't think this was a great match. And Ray has some... I mean, you put anybody with Ray, it's a fantastic match. And I don't know. I, I think Austin Theory's really good. I, I just don't know what happened here. What did you think of that, Matt? Uh, I was going to call you by like 18 different names. I was going to call you John. I was going to call you Matt. I was going to call you MG. At one point, I was going to call you Miz. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I So he... This match... Yeah, I kind of agree. It was just there again. Um, but the ending I thought was cool. The clever the clever finish. No, I it was a was clever right. finish, but yeah. Other than that. But, but nothing. It that, wasn't yeah, there wasn't it was, much there. What do you do with Austin Theory at this point? I feel like he's gonna have to go away. No, I don't know. Time. But he but he you know, they've invested a lot of time and he yeah. is what they mm -hmm. want. He mm -hmm. really is. I mean but, you, on like on paper, like he's like the prototype of the guy. You know, you know what I'll say. There was just no heat for this. Yeah, is that that's is that fair? Okay. Yeah, very fair, very <clears throat> fair. Becky Lynch interview in the back. Becky was interrupted by Tiffany Tiffany Stratton, uh, teasing that Becky would go down and challenge for the NXT title. They've been leading this for a little bit now. I think that's a great thing. I, I think like Becky this. should go. I do too. I think you should incorporate yeah. a little bit of these things. I like yeah. it for a couple of reasons. One, you're getting um, Tiffany Stratton. Um, appearances on the main roster so that she won't be unfamiliar when she yeah. does come up you can also take some feuds and put them on uh nxt i'm i wouldn't be surprised we see uh becky this week on tuesday in nxt yeah mm. we got damian priest and finn balor defeating Sami Zayn and kevin owens to win the wwe undisputed tag team titles this was i mean there was like five thousand things going on here all sorts of interferences. Uh, they did a spot that involved hockey gear. Kevin Owens hit a swanton on Dom from the balcony uh, near the ramp, which he missed, which he which overshot, he, which he overshot. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that. But uh, Rhea came out to spear Kevin Owens through the barricade. JD McDonough showed up, pulled Sammy off a of priest. Dom used the Money in the Bank briefcase on on Zayn. Finn got the pin. Uh, Kevin Owens was bleeding. What was that from? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know, but it happened right before the hockey. Spot. Right before he the hockey, yeah. The, and he came out from the boards, and they were in the, they were on the Penguins bench, and he, he popped up, and he's bleeding, and I'm like, what? Where'd that come from? So I'm not sure. I don't know, and but they yeah, didn't, then, they didn't shy away from it, so I don't know if that was a, uh, you know. Well, they did. When they got back to the ring, there was a spot where Sammy was fighting, and you could see one of the doctors okay. calling off uh, KO. So they were working on it throughout. Mm. Yeah. So I, I thought this was a lot of fun. It was chaotic. You know, they brawled everywhere. They went 20 minutes, 45 seconds. After this, we got the Grayson Waller effect with Cody. I, okay, I have a lot to say here. All right. <laughs> So the big surprise here, Cody comes out. The big surprise is that Cody got Jay Uso a job on Raw. This makes beyond zero sense. Minus five star sense. They were in a feud for a while. Jay was one part of the, the schmas that cost Cody the win at WrestleMania. These people, this stable, this group, prevented you from achieving your, your, your lifelong dream of not only headlining WrestleMania, not only being WWE World Heavyweight Champion, but also having that moment happen at WrestleMania. All of a sudden, your pals, your buddies, you're getting this guy a job. Am I am I overthinking wrestling at this point? No, I, but I, I will say this: I, I I don't know where they're going, but this certainly sounds like they're kind of forcing 
the story to come back around. So Roman gets mad. He's on Raw. Why is he on Raw? Cody's his fault. And eventually that's going to lead back around to uh, Cody and Roman. Yeah, so I guess so. That's, that's, I mean, but that's the only logic I can say. About hey, but it. guess what? There's so many other ways to do that. <laughs> you know, of course. So you Bro, got you got you got him a job. Uh, okay. We'll see. All of a sudden, all is forgiven. <laughs> Things are fine. Uh, I don't know. I, I I did not like this. I thought this was weird. Uh, but let's let's. I'm going to maybe continuity is a thing here, and it's going to make sense for me in a month or so. But at this moment, this makes zero sense. Rhea Ripley defeated Raquel Rodriguez. Rhea was out uh, for that tag match. She was all over the place for that thing. So now she comes out. She beats Raquel. Uh, I, I think the match was too long. Uh, I think 17 by minutes, five minutes. By about yeah. five minutes. Yeah. yeah, I would say by about five minutes. And not because I don't think they're good. I, I just think that the show went on long, too. What time did it end? What was the official end time? Do you remember? Uh, it was, well, definitely shorter than SummerSlam, but it was like 11.20, I think, when it ended. Yeah, a little, it was just a little I'm too guessing. long. I, you know, I yeah. think Rhea is fantastic as this big monster. Uh, Raquel, too, great. And they, they just gave him a little, they just went a little too long for me. But I thought, you know, I'm a big fan of Raquel and I'm a big fan of Rhea. So uh, I enjoyed it, but there were moments that I felt that could have been shorter. I think the crowd didn't know what to do with this, too, because no. I think they want to they wanna cheer Rhea. Um, and the only the heat she gets is when Dom comes out and he came yeah. out and interfered. And that's what led to the ending. So I want to talk about this. Yeah. Seth Rollins, Shinsuke Nakamura, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. They did a amazing video package for this match. OK. This is the closest I have seen Nakamura to being Nakamura pre 2016 Nakamura. New Japan. Nakamura, New Japan Nakamura. You know what? They're letting him speak Japanese. His, I mean, just his reaction is goofy, right? Like, not, not, not goofy, like silly, just like w strange faces. And he looks at you, and I'm like, this is what made me like this guy. Haunting. 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 There you go. The haunting. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a menace. So, so those, you don't know where he's those coming video from. Package, those video packages they did on Raw the last few weeks, those got me invested in this match. That's what sold me on it. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. And I mm -hmm. thought that total yep. video package was great. Uh, the match was uh it was a, i guess it would you, the way you describe it in the note is a slow plotting match i un totally understand what you mean uh nothing was wrong in the match uh, also muda was in the crowd um you know the story yeah, was that which... seth's back is in terrible shape he can't pick his kid up he can't do things and nakamura was taking advantage of the back the entire match and uh but he couldn't cut it at the end I thought this was the best Nakamura has looked as far as a, a character. I hope they continue something here. Uh, I do think Nakamura, you know, if there was, I, I know that they weren't going to take it off of Rollins, but this version of Nakamura winning that title at some point makes a lot of sense. And I think for the fans as well. But, you know, he's one of the, he was one of the best at, 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 at a certain point uh, in the top five for sure. Rollins also one of the best, and these guys had a fantastic, you know, WWE main event that, uh, you know, it's not the Tokyo Dome. It wasn't a major pay-per-view, but I thought they did a decent match. When we come back, we're going to talk about Collision and All Out. In a couple hours, it's starting. Or actually, soon, right after this, it's starting. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Last night's Collision. The end of the CM Punk era of that show. I can say that uh, there were, comp you know, obviously communication between WBD and AEW throughout the week. One of the conversations was the future of, of what they're going to do with Collision. And the way that it was said to me was, this was Friday? I got to ask, I got to find out. what MG, when did I send you that, that information? Friday, right? About the split yeah. ending. Yeah. You had Friday, and then you mentioned it again um, on Twitter, or the X. Yeah. Um, uh, yesterday. I, I, yesterday. Yeah, yeah yesterday. I, I, I sent it to us. Mm -hmm. It was Jim Valley. I was, I was responding to Jim Valley's tweet. 
but essentially, you know, they were they they were preparing for this uh, just in case it happened. You know, they had a plan. Uh, the split will be going away. That doesn't mean you're going to get Tony, uh, you know, the Young Bucks and uh, Omega on that show every week. But now, w what's preventing anybody from doing two shows or doing the other show? You opened up that roster up a little bit, which is a positive. AW Collision opens up with Tony talking, frankly, about the situation with CM Punk. Pretty much telling everybody that he's fired from the company. Uh, you start off with that, and you went into something very interesting. Ricky Starks comes out, challenges Ricky the Dragon Steamboat to a strap match. Ricky cut a hell of a promo. R uh, Ricky the Dragon. Not, you know, not, not Ricky Starks. We are two Rickies here. When's the last time you had a Ricky versus Ricky feud? Not often. Uh, but Ricky Steamboat cut a great promo. And you, you, and, you know, you kind of forget, like, the promo style of the, you know, that generation of wrestler was so freaking strong. And Ricky wasn't known to be, like, this magnificent promo. You know, in the era of Flair and Dusty, how can you be? <laughs> you know, they kind of overshadow you. But, uh, man, great promo. He says, look, here's the contract that says the dragon on it. Ricky Stark signs it, and he pretty much does the whole, it said dragon, but it didn't say Ricky Steamboat. And here comes <laughs> Brian <and> Danielson. <laughs> Bait and switch. Here comes Brian Danielson early from his injury. The reports were that he was probably going to be ready in October, and he would miss the Grand Slam show here in Flushing, Queens. But... Uh, I guess that's not the case. They brought him back out early. And, and man, what a team player. If he's not totally 100% so, re ready. So this was a, uh, in case of emergency, break glass situation. In case say? of emergency, break the Brian Danielson glass. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we're at right now. So, uh, you know, they've exhausted the John Moxley uh, in case of emergency glass. They never put well, him back. He's main eventing, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah, they never put so him back. In a way. Dude, they broke that glass, <laughs> True. you know, a year a year ago, and they never they never replaced them. So, uh, Brian Danielson's coming back. Uh, Ricky Steamboat will be probably involved in that match. It's a strap match, so they, I guess they could protect his arm or well, you know whatever the problem is there. Uh, so that's how the show started. We got a trios match. Acclaimed defeated uh, two point and Daniel Garcia. Aussie Open defeated Nick Wayne and Commander. And here was my moment. The worm. Rodzilla comes out. Dennis Rodman coming out. Listen, man, I thought he looked, he's an older man. He's in his, he's, he's 60, isn't he? Yeah, he just, I think he just turned 60. He just turned 60. The dude, you know what? This was the best I've seen Rodman in a very long time. And I've seen Rodman a ton. Last time, personally, last time I saw him was at that event that I was hosting. I was emceeing. I had a great conversation with him. Also, Lawrence Taylor. I had a great conversation with Lawrence Taylor that night, too. Uh, <laughs> my wife did also about real estate and had no idea who he was. He goes, who's this man? He was so sweet. I'm like, who? He goes, that guy. I was just talking to him for like two hours. I'm like, LT? Lawrence Taylor? She's like, you're talking to me like I should know who that is. I'm like, the, the greatest of all time. Rodman comes out. He was in, uh, interrupted by Jeff Jarrett. Uh, they do the whole thing. They want to invite him into the group. Now it turns into a... Um, a moment this led to the acclaim coming out, uh, putting the titles against Satnam Singh, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal tomorrow with Rodman in their corner. Perfect. Britt Baker, Sheeta. Rodman, Rodman was struggling. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Rodman yeah. was struggling with where the camera was the whole time. Listen, it's, it's like, all right. He doesn't this know. Way. <laughs> he doesn't know. He's in the United Center. First mm -hmm. time in 13 years. Baker, Sheeta, and Shatlander defeated the Outcasts. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated GPA. Main event was Jay White. Defeating Dax Harwood with Cash Wheeler. The Young Bucks came out to make the save at the end. Young Bucks' first appearance at Collision. Let's go through this card. Boom. All out. You see how we're doing this? Bang, bam, boom. Easy. You got the zero-hour over-budget charity battle royal to start it. You're also going to have Willow, Sheeta, Sky Blue, Athena, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes Martinez, and Diamante. Uh, for the women on Zero Hour. What is that match? It's a, it's just a three-on-three? Three? 
Nothing, yeah, no, step, no, nothing on the line. Match. Okay, six person match. That's what I haven't heard, but yeah, I think it's just to get a couple of them on there. I mean, Sky yeah. Blue, it's her hometown. She gets a pop. So. Okay, she'll get a big pop. You also have the trios titles on the line for zero hour. The acclaim with Daddy Ass defending against Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and Satnam Singh with Dennis Rodman in the acclaimed corner. I'm wondering what Rodman's rate is. I know what he charges normally for appearances. I'm curious if they got a nice deal for him. I'm two curious. <laughs> yeah. Two days. You got it for two days. Uh, Power, Powerhouse Hobbs versus Miro. Big meat match. Big boys just slamming into each other. Perfect. FTR and the Young Bucks versus Bullet Club Gold. I'm sure shenanigans will play in this. Kenny Omega versus Takeshita. I'm looking forward to this match tremendously. Eddie Kingston and Shibata versus Claudio and Wheeler Yuta. Did you see that Claudio Yuta promo where he beat the crap out of Yuta? Yes. And he's was, like, Eddie, was, you think you got you did something? Him. We beat the crap out oh. of him. And he hit him with what? Like a European uppercut and he saw like stars. Over and over. And then yeah. and then he just walked away and he's like, he keeps getting back up. And then he didn't get back up. And then he didn't. Yeah, he didn't get back up. <laughs> ROH Television Championship, Samoa Joe. Uh, defense against Shane Taylor. I wish they had done a better job with building this on AEW TV. Because if you don't watch Ring of Honor, you have no idea what's happening. Yeah. ROH or tag know who Shane Taylor is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I, I don't think most people do. Uh, ROH Tag Team Championship. Adam Cole and MJF defend against Alex Reynolds and John Silver. A lot of people are asking why. Why is this match happening? Listen, man, you know, MJF, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Long Island guys. They, they came up together. They wrestled together. I, I, think, I believe I called a show with him in it. Like, I, I believe it was, I think they were, yeah, I think they were on that, on that show that I called. But all of them. You know what their tag team name was? Alex Reynolds and John Silver when they were a tag team? The Beaver Boys. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Their indie name. Reynolds and Silver made their, made their debut as a tag team. August 2011. For NYWC. They, came, they were the Beaver Boys. Terrible name. Or, you know what? Fantastic name. Depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. But I mean, this kind of this kind of goes hand in hand, right? Like, okay, you know what? You've made it. You're at the top. Get your guys on. You know, push to do something cool with them. Give them a little bit of of, of the rub here. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I'd like to see MJF do more, but he just had a, he just wrestled you know two matches at a pay per view last week. We'll see where this goes. I'm sure this is a story building exercise we're gonna get. TNT Championship: Luchasaurus versus Darby Allen. All right, let's see what they do here. I'm sure Christian, Christian plays a big part. And Christian. I'm sure <laughs> Christian will play a big part. CBS Championship, Chris Stratlander defends against Ruby Soho. Strap match. Brian Danielson, Ricky Starks. And the AEW International Championship. Orange Cassidy defends against John Moxley. What a great promo by John Moxley last night. Selling this. I gotta tell you, I like serious Orange Cassidy. Don't like yeah. the promo he did on Dynamite was real good too. His like he's not he's going kind of. I don't know if he's going away from the the silly gimmick, but he's toning it down and being more serious. And well, I, I mean, like he it. has. Uh, you know, when he went to AEW and everybody was praising it, right? The gimmick. I, I was a little bit more concerned about it because the longevity of doing a comedy character. Uh, doesn't really mm -hmm. exist, and I and I think he's more than a comedy character, uh, and that's what I always he's said about him. Now. Orange, you know, mm -hmm. I I I think it's fine the pockets and the hand and the slow punch, the the slow kicks, but he's a tremendously talented wrestler. What, I and he's over. Why not adapt it a little bit? And that's what they've done here. You know, it's taken two years, I three years, this, but I expect this to over deliver tonight. This is going to be. And this might be a match we look back and go, oh my gosh, this was really good. I, I, honestly, I think every match on this card, okay, has to over deliver. We're at to the point. Everything, yeah. everything has to over deliver tonight. We're starting the show soon. 
I, I think everybody understands the importance of, you know, listen, it's one thing to be in front of a building like we were two years ago at that 2021 All Out where you got Danielson showing up, uh, Adam Cole showing up, CM Punk showing up. You had that great uh, steel cage match between the Bucks and uh, the Lucha Bros. That was a, a, a unified high for everybody in the building. And yeah, the wrestling mattered, but did it really? Tonight, the wrestling matters. What you do in these matches and what you create leaving the show matters. It matters for Wednesday. It matters for the following week. It matters for Grand Slam. This is not to be taken as, well, you know what? We're at the United Center. Everything happened, happened, but let's just do our show. No, you have to hit a home run. You know, Samoa Joe, Shane Taylor, this is a great example for Shane Taylor to make an example, a great opportunity for him to make a great example of what he can do. Everybody needs to work a billion percent tonight. You can't have this just be another pay-per-view. You were robbed of that momentum from all in. You can't let it affect you this time. The punk drama is gone. John, our, our producer's in my ear. You guys probably can't hear him, but I hear him. It's not the voices in my head. It's actually John, our producer. And he goes, 100% agree. You can't let it go to waste. You know, I'm going to leave you guys with a teaser here. But, man, if there was any, any real, I mean, opportunity now to replace them, this Edge situation is going to be very interesting on what Edge wants to do. If there was ever a moment for Tony to find a replacement, and this is the hardest part about wrestling. You get a top guy like that, and that's the fear of letting him go. How do you replace him? Can you replace him? Is anybody available? The reality is there's one person right now that possibly is available. Do you want to spend the money and get him on? Wrestling Observer Live will be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes here before all out. You know, we were talking about Punk leaving, but like, think about the matches we got robbed out of. We never got him and Omega. We never got him and, and, and Tanahashi. We never got him and Okada in any capacity. But we did get him and Kojima. <laughs> and we did get him and Darby. And we got to see that tag match with Sting with the face paint. Just, you know, very unfortunate. The highlight uh, might be MJF and him. MJF and him would, was a great program. That was a highlighted program, yeah. You know, we got some stuff, but not a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of those matches still that we have not gotten in this company. And, and I think it's time to go back to the basics and start providing these dream matches that people wanted to see. You don't know when your time is running out. You have a lot of guys on this roster that I would... You know, I, I know they're waiting. They're waiting, but it's time to pull the trigger on them. Guys, I'm going to say this before I wrap it up. Enjoy tonight's show. Have a drink. Have some Pepsi. Have whatever you want to drink. Order some food. Enjoy wrestling. Forget about the CM Punk stuff. I'm probably going to talk about it two more times, and I'm done. I'll talk about it on Matt Men that I'm recording on Monday. And we're live, pal. I'm recording that on Tuesday. And a whole lot more. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, oh, one more thing. Send me your thoughts on this, right? Send me your thoughts on tonight's pay-per-view after the show. Because I'm doing a poll here. I want to I find out what everybody thought of this. Because right now, a lot, of, uh, a lot of uncertainty. But I think tonight they'll do a good job. Send it to me on Twitter. At Andrew Zarin. I should say X. At Andrew Zarian. I'll be back live next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you all next time. Take care.